All right, let's get started. Got a breezy day here. We're gonna be doing this nice landscape scene. This is in South Central Pennsylvania. I've driven past this scene for years. Over 20 years and I've never painted it until today. So you can kind of see part of the reason is I'm right along the road. I'm barely parked off to the side and we're going to have some traffic. Colors on my palette, titanium white, cadmium lemon, cadmium orange, yellow ochre, transparent red oxide, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, cerulean blue, viridian, and chromium green oxide. So I'm going to start with basic block in. just with some approximate colors. I know these colors are not uh, gonna be perfect, but they're gonna help get me started at least. And I'm gonna keep it kind of sketchy, adding quite a bit of mineral spirits to my paint. It's doing a nice tone. As I come down and make it a bit greener, That's going to start to give me a nice aerial perspective right away. Hopefully you know if you've studied, been well trained, that with aerial perspective, yellows are closest to you. And I'm definitely not going to use everything in this scene. There's a lot in that farm scene that I don't want to paint. They have, I guess, barrels, uh, bales of hay wrapped up in white or something. I don't know what that stuff is, but I know it wouldn't make them the most attractive painting. So I'm gonna borrow from this scene to try to create something interesting. So let's start out with the barn. I'm going to put the main barn up here. Probably going to change the buildings too. By the way, if you like this video, do me a favor, hit the subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the uh, hit the like button as well. Makes the algorithms happy. My uh, Patreon supporters will be able to watch the entire video. If you want to see this entire video, uh, just become a Patreon supporter. Five bucks a month. We usually post at least a couple videos a month. You'll watch. You'll be able to see the full length without commercials. I also teach live online painting classes, where we go really in depth. Patreon supporters get to watch the full-length video. My students get a lot of personalized attention. We paint every Saturday together as a group. And lots of perks that go with that. Online critique of artwork, Q&A sessions, all that. I also got a uh, demo membership platform where you can watch my full length instructional demos. You might ask, what's the difference between that and watching your YouTube videos? YouTube videos, I'm not going to tell you every color I'm mixing because I can't. I just don't have time. Even the Patreon supporters, I, you're, you're going to see the whole video and you're going to see me commenting on quite a bit. But I just don't have time to go really slow and in-depth. I do that in my online instruction because that's done in the studio. And my demo videos are about eh, four, five, six hours long every month. 
and I go really in depth into everything just because I have the time to. So check that out, there's links below. All right, so I need to gauge the difference between the blue of the barn, and what I mean the blue of the barn is the shadow side of the barn, the value difference between that and the hills. I think I need to go a bit darker with these hills in the first place to get them to look how they should. Now I'm squinting at the scene the whole time. I'm not keeping my eyes wide open. Shouldn't say I'm squinting all the time, but most of the time I squint when I look at the scene. Helps me to simplify all the detail and everything. Let's get in, I should have did this earlier. Let's get in one of the distant trees, or one of the big trees, I should say. Big dark tree. It's gonna be my darkest value in the whole scene. I still don't want it to be a full strength dark because I am standing a little ways away from this and there's quite a bit of air between me and that and this dark tree I'm putting in. I'm gonna put the tree a little bit behind the barn. It's not, from my vantage point, this tree is not behind the barn, but I think it'll look better if I put it behind the barn. We'll see. This is just sketching anyway. If I mess up compositionally, no big deal. I have the notes if I decide ever I want to do this scene later in the studio. I can just move that tree later. breeze is really kicking up here. It's an absolutely gorgeous day, but that breeze is going to make things a bit challenging. Okay, so I think I have enough to start gauging values. Can tell you right now I went too far over with this shadow from a drawing perspective. Let's fix that. A wet paper towel, or I should say a paper towel soaked with mineral spirits. I'm heading out west in a couple weeks and I'll be recording myself painting, planner painting out there. And once again, my Patreon supporters get to watch the whole thing. And people who join my class, my online classes, will probably end up painting some of those scenes. We did last year when I went out west. Came back with some really nice uh, sketches and things and we painted at least a couple of them so far.
Okay, there's a cast shadow right here. That cast shadow is going to change pretty quickly because of the way the sun's moving. That cast shadow is lighter and it seems to have a little bit more of a alizarin feel than the uh, the shadow side of the barn. So constant comparison when you're doing this. Comparing value and color temperature. Anytime you put something down, you compare it to something else. And just ask yourself how light or how dark is it compared to what's, uh, what else you put down. And if you get those relationships correct, you're in good shape. You don't have to match the color exactly. You just have to match the differences in value and color temperature. All right, gonna block in. There's a dark green shadow. Let's get that in. A dark green cast shadow right on the ground on this side of the barn. I think that's going to be important for gauging the shadow side of the barn. I think it looks pretty decent. Let's get in that roof. That might change as well. be a bit too dark. The roof, it's, it's some kind of aluminum roof, but it's definitely a bit darker and seems to have more of a reddish cast to it. Then the, um, then the lightest part of the barn, which is right here. I'm going to block in really quickly, quickly the lightest part of that barn, do some white, a bit of ochre, and some alizarin. That might be a little too red. Let's throw in a touch of Viridian to knock that reddish tone down. Viridian is a wonderful color for doing this kind of stuff because it will, um, it will neutralize a red, but it won't make it earthy. It'll keep it pushed further back. There's actually one little accent of light that is even lighter than that part of the barn, the face, the face part of the barn we just painted. Not pure white. I rarely ever use pure white anywhere in my painting. So I'm going to add a bit of lemon to it, but it's actually the roof of this little outbuilding thing, this little structure right there. That might be a bit too lemony. I'm gonna add just a bit more pure titanium white right over that to calm that down a bit.
Okay, and right along here there's a dark, it looks kind of warm thing going on there. And when you're dealing with these more ambiguous colors, that's how you want to talk to yourself. Don't try to match it exactly. First of all, just ask yourself the value and then just go, okay, approximately what does that look like? Does it look a little warm? Does it look a little cool? Cool meaning that it just leans toward blue, warm that it leans toward orange. to get in some more of this architectural stuff because in a scene like this when you're planner painting the light's going to change quickest on the architecture and so I usually try to block in that first Okay, and then there's the roof of this over here. This roof is lighter, quite a bit lighter in value. But I, I gotta be careful with it because I know I don't go too crazy with composition, but if I make it too light, it might draw too much attention to itself. And I want to keep the attention more over here. This is just a side actor, if you will. Let's get in the this side plane of this structure here, because that will change fast. By the time I'm done with this painting, that could be in complete shadow. We'll see. It's good to analyze the scene when you're doing it. Ask yourself, what's going to change first? Look at the direction of the sun. Know your directions, know which way is east, west. I sometimes even bring a compass with me. And of course we know the sun travels west when it's during the daytime. So anything that's on the east side, you know, if you're painting around closer to high noon, anything that's on the east side facing like an architecture, that's gonna end up in shadow real fast. And if you want to get the sunlight on it, maybe you don't, but if you do, uh, get that painted in as quick as you can. So I got a pretty decent block in. So I'm going to switch now um, to Patreon mode. So if you want to watch the rest of this video and watch me finish this up, uh, become a Patreon supporter five bucks you can watch this the other videos that i have and will be putting on there if you're interested in studying under me my online classes uh, check out the link below for that as well